G'day guys, Michael Tamitz here. Today I'm going to show you a new tutorial in Octane Render for instancing. This tutorial will be split up into two sections. Each section will be uh, split into two part one and part two because um, I'll be each one will be about 20 minutes and I only have a 15 minutes uh, time frame on YouTube. So the first thing we'll be going in an instancing will be the placement node and the geometry group node. There's also the scattering and the material map nodes, but we'll be focusing on those later. So let's get started. I'll be placing the OB, the objects that we'll be working on into the file, into a RAR file, where you will have to download. So you don't have to uh, make anything, but if you want to make your own object, please uh, feel free to make it. So let's get started. Let's. Oh, um, first we have to go to Refractive Software. All right. So first we're going to have to go to Release Candidate Testing Forum and download the new Interesting Preview Previewing Test Build and click um, and download the one that best suits your system. Then let's go back to Octane. Op install the new uh, version and right click add object as you can tell there's new uh, options here geometry group, material map, mesh, placement and scatter we want the mesh node and load up your standalone mesh I will have a uh, I have this rock for, um, object here as you can see So let's give this a little bit of a texture and color. Give it a bit of a brown color. Let's give this a day night cycle. And let's put this down a bit and the about 500 since it's going to get a bit slow soon. All right, so we have your rock or your standalone object file. Now, let's get into it. So right click, add, objects, and placement. The placement node is the following. You can now, you can now move your objects in Octane, rotate, scale, and move them. Yes, that's now possible. So with the translation, if I press one, it will move on the uh, X axis. As you can see, uh, we can also put the t put this up on the y-axis. As you can see, and we can also change the scaling. So let's two, two, and two, and as you can see, we'll become a lot more bigger. Or we can just go random two and six point three, and everything is uh done. Everything is fully calculated as it should be. And yeah, so that's the scaling. And you can also ro you can also rotate. Now, before I go into the scaling and the translation um, options are very sensitive. That's why I did it manually. Um, if you do it by mouse, it will become very hard. Which this uh, will be changed in the future. And there's also the rotation. The rotation isn't as uh, isn't as sensitive, but yeah, you can even change the rotation. Let's put that to zero. So now, instancing. We can, with instancing, we can duplicate this mesh object. That's 9,000 polygons, pretty much 100,000 to uh, uh, 100,000 or a thousand times, of only putting a little bit of stress on the C on the uh, GPU. As of right now, we're using about 29.5 megs. So. Write that down just for. So we're using about 29.5 megs. Let's get started. So, right click, add. Now, what we're going to do is copy the placement node. So, copy, paste, paste. Let's do it about five times. This is in order to duplicate the object. 
Now, then we're going to right click, add object, and we're going to add a geometry group. What a geometry group is, is that it's a placeholder, it's a preview node um, that uh, makes you see all of your changes. Um, here, there's the add input and remove input. We want to click the add inputs five. So there's five inputs here. And place your placements node with the following. And add the geometry groups up. As you can see. Now, Let's start moving. So, uh, grab the second placement node and let's change the translation to about two. Now, if you click on the geometry group, there you see it. Two versions of the same mesh duplicated. So, if you click this one, you can only pre uh, preview this placement. If you click the second one, you can view the second placement on its own. If you click the geometry group, then you see two of them there. So let's change the other one. So this would be four, six, and eight. And as you can see, the full a full row of rocks. Now let's duplicate this whole entire row five times. So now you can do it manually by repeating all these steps again. Uh, that's what you just did, or you can highlight them. Right click, copy, paste, and add them down. So, um, now since you copy paste them, you have to delete the, var the uh, inputs you just put in because we're going to be putting new ones in, some fresh ones. So, let's click, click the second. Let's go to the Z and put in two, or, oh uh, yeah, two. As you, can, there's, as you can see, there's two rows now, so the next one will be four, six, and eight. And there you go. There's now one floor of rocks. Now let's copy this again five times. Repeat the process again. Uh, delete the inputs and by the way don't just do the translation I mean uh, you can also change the scaling rotation you can do anything you want I'm just showing you the very basics so placement and let's put this on the y-axis this time and let's put it to a three now uh, two yeah two is good next one Two. Next one. Ah, oh, next one is four. Next one is two. I mean eight and ten. And it seems that we have to delete this value. So, uh, six. So as you can see, we have a full block here. Let's just change the rendering settings so we can see a bit more. We have a full block here, getting a bit more laggy, but look how much stress we're putting. Literally no stress on the GPU. All done with instancing, and look at this, the tree of nodes we're putting here. It makes it look co complicated and smart. So let's copy this again. So we're going to copy the whole entire thing, paste, and let's delete the options again. And let's put this on the y axis of ten. 20, 30, and 40. A whole entire row now. Look at that. 
and still moving around flawlessly. Now let's copy this whole entire row four times into a main slash skyscraper. So let's copy it again, paste, merge this down, uh, let's delete our variables, and let's delete, uh, let's not delete it. Now uh, let's get a bird's eye view. Now we want to move the second one, 10, oh not 10, we have to use a Z, 10, negative 10. Oh, beautiful. Uh, 10. Uh, 10 and 10. Oh, that's a nice shape. Oh yeah, let's keep that. And the next one can be uh, 20. Oh no, about 50. And let's change the scaling of this one. Let's just to be a little bit more crazy. Two, two, and oh wait, that's the rotation. Two, two, two. And let's place this down. About Forty. Ten, maybe. Fifteen. So, like, that's that's pretty cool. You have all these. And let's just change all of these. Let's go crazy. Let's change all of these. Five, two, six, uh, point two, uh, just. You know, you go crazy with it. Change the rotation here. 10. It's got 100. 50. Uh, 60. 50. 10. 74. Uh, 75. I mean, look at that. And let's get into the detail. We can actually go right into the detail. And it's not laggy at all. Now, we have around three... We have 3,000 duplicates of this mesh. Each mesh, each object is 9,000 polygons. We originally had... We originally used up 29.5 megabytes. We are only... We are now only using 30 megabytes. That's... That is, that's not even a megabyte. So that's with only the, that's with only the, in, this is only the, this is only the placement uh, node for instancing. We still have to go through all the others, but this is what you can do so far on the placement node. It's amazing. So, um, that's the placement node for you. Um, the next tutorial will be using the placement placement uh, node again, but we'll be uh, making a, a full-fledged scene that's um, up for production. But bear in mind, it will still be very tacky and very, uh, very, um, very basic, but still pretty cool. So, um, yep. Thank you, and I'll see you next tutorial.